Hello, after watching this video, you will know how to use the model object component effectively and will have a good query cache workflow for editing parameters on Rhino objects. You can find the model object component in the Rhino tabs objects section. The model object is a crucial component and this video has been long overdue in our Rhino tab series. So without further ado, let's get to examples. Now what exactly is a model object? I have made it understandable for myself like this. The model object data type consists of a geometry, which can be a box or an annotation and the information attached to it. So these together will form an alliance called model object. Here we have our grasshopper script on the left and some geometry modeled in Rhino on the right. If we click on the box, we can find the object information in the properties panel. We can use the model object component to extract this information from an object, or we can use it to create a model object or to edit these properties of an existing model object. I have set this geometry container to the box on the left. It is connected to the model object's object input and I am using panels to display all the parameters that it has. With the model object component we can extract the object or in this case the path because we are using a panel output, the geometry, name of the object which you can find here, the layer of the object and visibility, display, drafting and render attributes. In this geometry container I have referenced the box on the right. I am now connecting the geometry to the geometry input, creating a name with a panel and connecting it to the name input. Then we have connected the model layer component and visibility, display, drafting and render attributes components to the model object component. We have covered these in our previous videos. So if you haven't watched them already, then I recommend to do so after this video. The idea is that I will use these components to assign the attributes to the model object. Now this box here is currently not the model object that this component is editing. We are only using the geometry of this extrusion for the model object. If I go ahead and bake this component, we will now have an extrusion called object name, which is the object that we created with this component. Let's move on. The key takeaway here is to be mindful of your inputs and data types so you know when you are editing a model object and when you are just referencing a geometry of another model object to create a new one. Here I have again referenced some model objects. In the geometry container we have the first reference extrusion. In the first model object container we have the extrusion in the middle and in the last model object container, we have a block instance. Now, if I connect the geometry to the object input, I will be getting this object here. Now, when starting to perform some operations on the geometry, notice that the model object and the geometry are different data types. If I connect the model object container to the deconstruct BREP input, it will be recognized as a closed BREP. If I connect the geometry to the BREP input, it will be recognized as a referenced BREP. Now, in this case, the component works either way, but there might be some edge cases where it actually matters. Now, a block instance is also an object, but as an output, you will get a model block instance and the geometry of a model block instance so you cannot use it with the deconstruct prep component. In this case, I would have to explode the model object to its subcomponents to get the two closed extrusions. Let's move on. Next, I will show you how you can edit the attributes of a model object with this component. We are back with our first object, the model object. I'm using query model objects component to get exactly this one object. It doesn't matter in which way you use this component to get the objects 
or how many of them are. The object output is connected to the model object component and I have a content cache that I will be pushing this object into. It is currently on layer 02. I will connect a model layer component and a panel to the layer output. Now if I right click on the layer and set this to layer 01 and I push, this object is now on layer 01. Now this example might not seem so flashy until you grasp the power of being able to edit Rhino objects directly from Grasshopper and still being able to, for example, move them without needing to parametricize them through Grasshopper completely. That is all for now. If you learned something, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next.